do face-to-face training all the time. So we put it into e-learning. We, so if you look at a YouTube video, a two to five, two megabytes to fifteen megabytes. I'm talking about three. I'm talking about three that I put into an e-learning format, a video format, and then we replicate it to hundreds and thousands of people. So if you end up working at a Wipro or a company like that, you might be taking some of my courses in the future, and you might be taking them in an e-learning video type format. Uh, let's take help. doctor's office and said, here's all the folders on my on my dog. And the doctor said, well, wait a minute. I don't need those. She just plugged in and she had her complete history, including all the way back, history, including all the way back years to her birth. Even though she was our doctor for the first time. Now, why is that important? If you go back to the revolution slide, uh, it says that there are societal changes. Well, one of the things that we're all doing now is make, we're making demands on the healthcare system to track our, our healthcare throughout our life. And then when my daughter gets older, uh, her children, uh, her children, it was, I would like to know what, I would like to see my parents who are deceased, but I'd like to see their medical records because maybe that's going to affect my life. So, um, all this technology, technology, okay, so here's the paradox. Even though 70% of the world's information will be created by individuals, the responsibility to store, protect, to store, protect, leverage, drive competitiveness, uh, is going to be the responsibility of corporations. So 85% of that responsibility will be for corporations. I was just talking with uh, one of my kids at EMC, and he said that and he was actually a, a, a vice president of engineering. So he was very technical. He stored all the information in his home, all his family pictures, medical records, and so forth. His house burned down. His house burnt down. So as someone that's very technical, he said, I will never do that again. I'm going to use cloud computing. I'm going to use cloud computing now to Google, and Google stores all of his information. So when I say and they call that an array, that's, that's what people have thought about storage now for the last 20 years. And one of the main reasons is that the server companies were selling the storage. So you would go into a customer, if you're a Hewlett Packard or IBM or other server companies, and you would, you would talk about the application and talk about the mix. How many millions of instructions per second will this server do? And that was important back then. But the service has become more of a commodity, and the information has become more important than the server. So in addition to that, the technology has become more complex. So what happens is when you go into a customer and you're talking to the CIO and their team, you're talking about things like storage talking about things like storage networks. So you have a, a storage switch, maybe from Cisco or a company like that, um, and all the storage plugs into that switch, and then the servers plug into the, the storage switch. That's a storage area network. And that's good for high transactions, and that's good for high transactions. But what happens if you go into an engineering organization where they're developing and they need to transfer files a lot? Well, in that case, you, you would probably use network attack storage or a, or a NAS. So in that case, you have all the servers spread out, and then the storage is centralized and plugs into the network. So everybody gets plugs into the network. So everybody file sure, file serving. Uh, content addressable storage has. That's, there's a lot of compliance regulations going around the world today. 
So you need to go, sometimes you need to store your information for 10, 20, 30 years, because in 30 years, but then when they come in and they audit you, you need to get access to that right away. So there are algorithms that are built just for that type of storage algorithms that help you identify the data as fast as possible, so the dust as possible, so that, uh, you won't have to uh, be impatient with you. As, uh, technology, what that does, technology, what that does, bunch of servers, and instead of having application server, application server, application server, what it does is it partitions that one server, and you put multiple applications on that same server. And we all know that most of the capacity from a performance performance point of view on servers isn't utilized. So putting multiple applications on the same server uh, is a good thing. It's safe, uh, is a good thing. And then from there, you plug into a high performance, high capacity, high availability storage platform. When, when customers talk about storage, they typically don't talk about the technology. That's after the fact. They talk about their business applications, set applications, how they're virtualizing their environment. They talk about enterprise requirements planning, or customer resource management, or their other management, or their manufacturing. They're talking at the business level. And that's what our storage experts need to do, and they, and they do do that. So uh, the next one is um, so the next one is um, so if you if you think about 9/11 uh, now Mumbai was was it wasn't really uh, an attack on businesses uh, it was really unfortunately an attack on people if you look at 9/11 they attacked businesses you know people within the businesses many companies many companies. Uh, a lot of times it's because of the people loss, which was tragic. However, a lot of companies went out of business because they lost their information. They didn't have disaster recovery plans in place. So the companies that had thought ahead of time and had a disaster recovery plan in place, they had their storage, their, their information in uh, their reserves, their storage and applications in the trade center. But then across the river, or in other parts of the country, they had replicated their same environment. So they were up and running within a couple of days. Within a couple of days. Information in your business, your company is basically out of business. If you lose all the customer records, um, of your, all the customer records, how are you going to do business with your customers? They, number one, they won't trust you anymore, but you won't be able to provide a service to them. So disaster recovery is often mainly about the storage and then everything around it like the service. <coughs> or, or at least a historic, traditional view of uh, IT. So we all know about the operating systems, the operating systems, we all know about databases and how important they are. We know about networking and um, applications, of course. Um, applications, of course. How uh, CIOs would typically look at their, their purchase decisions. And again, if you were HP or IBM, you would just add in the storage. It would be how much capacity do you need? But what's happened over the last three to ten years is storage has come out into the main, out into the, out into the front of their purchasing decisions. Because again, they're talking about their applications. How am I going to store, manage, protect, leverage that information? So that's an important transition that's happened over the last three to ten years. Purchasing decisions now are made on the applications, the storage, and servers are actually one of the last things that are decided upon. And of course, security. Uh, security goes throughout, uh, especially today, it's getting more and more important. Okay, so we know information is growing, we know it's important, but now we have a people challenge. We've gone 